everybody, and welcome to the Stronghold Podcast. Uh, my name is Luke. I'm here with Jake, the producer. Jake, what's up, my brother? Hey, how you doing? It's uh, all good. Sunday afternoon. It's very exciting. It's yeah. Very exciting day of fights. Big MMA fights today. We're sitting here in my place. I got a glass of scotch. We watched a bunch of great fights today. Ready to get this thing going. So, uh, oh, this is UFC 259, right? Yes. Let's start off with the fights, man. There was a couple crazy things that happened. Uh, just a quick run through. There were three title fights. Uh, Amanda Nunes fought. Piotr Jan fought. Um, Aljamain Sterling fought. And then you had the main event between Israel Adesanya and Jan Blahovic. The undercard was a banger. I actually thought the undercard fights were, were even better than the, the main event fights. A couple shocking things in the main event fights, but uh, we're going to break through... Uh, break down all this card, this whole card. I'm going to go through some of the finishes, and then uh, we even just recorded a technique video for all my Khabib fanboys out there. We just recorded a, a breakdown of the Islam Makachev uh, Von Flu choke. And uh, if you guys don't know, the Von Flu choke is one of my favorite chokes. I hit it all the time. Uh, it's quite a. It's one of my weird, like esoteric moves. You know, like. After you train a long time, everybody kind of gets like one or two funky moves. That happens to be one of my funky moves. Like it's, I just pull it out of the box sometimes, and I've got the pressure right. I know how to do the squeeze, and it's a, it's a weird one. Hey, you can even do it from the side control, and a lot of people were surprised for the Dober t- tap there. Yeah. But uh, I, I knew it was in, and uh, we did a nice breakdown there. So uh, we will release that in tandem with this video. So uh, where should we start, dude? Do you want to start on the main card? Start start at the top and work our way down. Start with the good stuff. Oh. Yeah, let's start with the good stuff. All right, I'll bring, it, bring up the card. Yeah, let's see it. Okay, let's start with the three title fights. Let's just get the one out of the way that everybody kind of knew was going to happen, including us. <laughs> Amanda Nunes destroyed Megan Anderson. Not a surprise. No, not a surprise. If she had won, it would have been the biggest upset in MMA history. Bigger than Matt Sarah beating GSP. Bigger than yeah, Holly Holm knocking out Ronda. Those are probably the biggest two in a title fight, right? Yeah. This one would have been bigger for sure. Um, and it's it, what I liked about it was that it was with a sick move that I teach all the time in class with that the back triangle. If you guys are uh, – if you BJJ guys out there aren't working your back triangles and your back attack sequences, you need to get on that, man. That is one of the most dominant – positions you can get somebody in if you can get behind somebody and wrap your legs around their neck with their arm trapped i mean they literally had i mean amanda was kind of nice and just went to the arm bar in the show but you can just drop elbows there you can hammer fist like honestly if you get that it's one of the most dangerous positions you could possibly be in i I think amanda had already hit her enough in that fight without having to hit her anymore she was a merciful lord (laughs) yeah because if she had had wanted to man (laughs) She could have just dropped them elbows from there. And there's lit- your arm's like this. Yeah. The other one is trapped underneath the leg. You, I mean, she could just hold one arm and just boom, boom, boom. Just wreck her with elbows, wreck her with hammer fists. And uh, that's an excellent move, man. If you can get that on somebody, which you can, especially if you've got a good rear naked choke, you got a good straight jacket, back attack. Or you've already knocked seven shades of shit out of them, <laughs> like Amanda Nunes had, and yeah. you really don't know where they are anymore. I mean, I, I thought that would happen. She just doesn't have any challengers at 145 pounds. I think that the UFC, unfortunately for the three women who compete in that division, I think they're going to have to close it down. Yep. Uh, you know, they could potentially reopen it once they get more more talent there, like they did with the lightweight division. How crazy is that? I don't know how long you've been watching the UFC, but I was watching the UFC when they got rid of their lightweight division because there wasn't enough talent. And then they later brought it back, and then BJ Penn won the title there, and then now it's one of the most insane divisions in, in the UFC. So they could do that. Um, I think they have to. There's just no one competitive there. Um, they'll probably get rid of that division. So Amanda Nunes just does what Amanda Nunes does and just crushes everybody. Yeah, she's uh, the most dominant champion. And what a right diverse now. finishing sequence. She rocks her on the feet. She ends up taking her down, takes her back. Megan tries to shake her off. She throws her leg over the shoulder on the back triangle, back triangle arm bar. I mean, she had the, the leg was under the chin. She could have tapped her with the choke or the arm bar. The one, both of them were coming. So great, great finishing yeah. sequence. Awesome, awesome techniques to learn. Uh, you should get that in your arsenal, everybody listen to this back triangle. Uh, did I release that technique video? The Nogi version with that? No, because we had the drilling in the background. Oh, if you yeah. So, so I actually released a... Me and Jake filmed a technique video where I taught you guys how to do the back triangle. 
but uh, we had this <laughs> so annoying. We're sitting there filming these these technique videos, right, to release, and then there's just this <laughs> drill starting on in the background. So we're like, okay, let's stop the drilling. And then we get five minutes into the video, <laughs> and I know that if you're listening to it in headphones or something, it's going to be super annoying. So we ended up not releasing it. If you want that video, write it in the comments. Uh, I get this move a lot. You can. It's really high. It's pretty effective when when you get decent at it. Um, so anyway. Amanda Nunes continues her path down the goat trail. She's cleared out both divisions. I don't know. She's like, beat every yeah, champion in the history like, of women's MMA, basically. Yeah, I don't know what they do with that. I don't know who in their right mind wants to step in the ring with the next. So. I about Juliana Pena. I'm just like, all no. right, all right. I mean, I think it's Shevchenko is the only one who ever has been competitive with her since Kat Zingano beat her. But you want to see that a third time? I, I don't know. I think let Valentina do steroids is the only way to make me watch that a third well, time. Just crazy. say, you can do it. You get on the opioids. It'll make it a little more even at least. Because Valentina went down a weight class and Amanda went up. So, I mean, now there's probably like 30 to 40 pounds between them. First of all, that says a lot about how good Valentina is. Because the second fight, uh, Amanda won by split decision, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I think so. And the first fight was pretty close too. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, she, she's right there. I don't know what you do with her, but you just got to gotta appreciate Amanda Nunes while you got her. Because she's probably not long for this competitive thing, and she'll no doubt go down as one of the greats ever. So let's get to the controversial one, man. Let's go to... Let's save Israel and, and Jan for a minute and go to the Piotr Jan Aljamain Sterling fight. So crazy finish. This was the first time in UFC history that a title changed hands because of a disqualification and uh, for you that for the listeners that don't know a lot of people seem to be confused about why it was a loss rather than a no contest and and the the difference is if the knee was declared to be accidental yeah the fight would be ruled a no contest so if they if they thought that Jan accidentally did it or it happened maybe like in transition when Sterling is on his way up to his feet which is typically how these fouls happen right they, you know, a lot of times people play the game a little bit. And first of all, you hands don't down. have to have... Hands are up. Hands are down. Hands yeah. are up. And this is an interesting point because you don't actually have to have your knees down. You can have your hands down and they still can't throw that knee. You can have one knee down and they can't throw that knee. Two knees down. If you're a grounded opponent, if your hands are down or your knees are down. And uh, typically when you see these kind of fouls, it's because the person is moving up. Like they're on their way to the feet and what you're trying to do is time it perfectly. Because you want to time it right when their hands come off the mat, but not when they're grounded. And first of all, it's kind of a dumb rule. If, if you watch that fight in one championship, that's a clean knockout. Yeah. One championship allows you to knee the head of grounded opponents like Pride did. So if this is uh, one, then Jan wins, no issue. Right? Which I kind of like. I don't like these weird gray... Act- like, if you can knee them in the head when they're standing, why can't you knee them in the head when they're on the ground? doesn't make any... If you can slap your shin right across someone's dome full force... Why on earth can't you knee them when their hands are on the ground? You just have to develop a different defense. Yeah. And one has done it now since, for years. I've never heard of somebody like getting a spinal injury, which is what they kind of worry about, I think, the top of the head. But one always has it. I've never heard of somebody getting horribly disfigured or injured from it. But it's not even like it's a common knockout in one. I can't think of seeing one recently. No, so, it's- so people, like you say, people can work it into their game to defend against the technique as well. It's just a diff- you have to get up more cautiously, I guess, or something along those lines. Or you have to flop back to guard the second you see that thing coming. Yeah. It is a game changer for sure. But, you know, as like Major and I often talk about, the uh, the, the defense will develop around what you, what you make legal. And, you know, I honestly think that the U.S. Athletic Commission should look at the sample size of one championship and pride and know that no one has ever, to my knowledge, been knocked out worse than you've ever would typically be knocked out from that position. But the thing with like American athletic commissions is that once these rules are ensconced, it is almost impossible to get them to yeah. change again. They still don't allow the down elbow. They don't allow the knees to the head. Both of these things are like whatever. The, the crazy part of what you just said though is that the rule today that they've got in place then actually made it more dangerous for the athlete because he was clearly he was he was knocked out. Oh, like, he was. That he, was he wasn't continued. And they're saying to him, "Do you want to continue? Like, can you continue?" And he's, you know, I'll do my, like. Trying to you know, trying to will himself. How dare they put that on, that on the fighter? Like, yeah, was, How dare they put that on the fighter? Because if you ask him to do that, like first of all, you can't put him in that position. No. Nah. 
Because, you know, there's even people at the gym when we were watching this talking shit. Like, oh, he's faking it. He's faking it. That's bullshit, man. That, from that position, when you're on your knees like that, first of all, your head is the same height as their hips. Yeah. So, I mean, that is maximum power. Like, the head level and the hip knee level is right there. So, you can hit it with full force. Um, and if you expect him to continue, he's going to get take so much damage on that already that his, his chances are gone. 100%. But people have, not necessarily in MMA, but like in rugby and sports like that, people have died because they've been, con- like, he's probably concussed, he's definitely not with it, and then they take more blows to the head, which he would have done. He wouldn't have been able to defend himself. Yeah, Jan was fine. Oh, yeah. you, you know who wasn't fine? Aljamain Sterling. Yeah. So Maybe Jan hurt his knee a little bit, but outside of that. I mean, I, I thought it was gross that they asked him if he yeah. would continue, because it was a flagrant foul. Thank God. I mean, listen... And I was not a fan of Joe Rogan's commentary tonight. I don't know if, if you heard a couple things. First of all, he, he was talking about how it was disappointing that the title changed hands like that. Dude, you cannot put this on Aljo. No. Like, you, you can't put that on him. He was the victim here, right? And he doesn't want to win the title like that, but the, those are fouls. They're illegal. And if you deliberately throw an illegal strike, which is what the referee deemed... Then what do you do? You can't just make it a no contest because then Piotr Jan gets off scot free. He's still the champ. Like what do you do? You have to have consequences. Yeah. It seems fair to me that if they deem the, the need to be accidental, it's a no contest. The champ retains. If it's intentional, if you intentionally foul somebody, you're done. You lose. And you don't get no contest. You lose. Yeah, I, I heard the ref say, and I think everyone heard the ref say, he's down. Like the ref told Piotr Jan, he's a downed opponent, so he's got no excuse. For like throwing the knee, he'd been told a couple of seconds before that's a downed opponent, so he should know you can't knee him square in the face. And he's fought, Piotrion's fought under the unified rules for a long time. Then there was a little bit of this controversy. Apparently, Khabib was in his corner, or some people were in his corner, and the commentary team said that someone told him to kick or knee or something when he was there. Did you hear that? You heard them say that, right? In the, on the broadcast? I, I didn't hear it on the broadcast, but I read it in, uh, on, uh, when I was looking at the fight on the gram that one in the corner had said, throw it. Then he did. So, I mean, I can't imagine what any any of them were thinking. Him, whoever was in his kick corner, could be. But you know, the fact that they would tell him to throw that strike is absolutely insane. He was he was clearly grounded. There was no ambiguity. There was no shade of gray. So that was pretty alarming to see that. Um, and it's not ideal. But this whole idea that Rogan had that, like, the title shouldn't change. Yeah, it should. If you flagrantly foul somebody, you're done. And listen, it's not the end of the line for Jan. He's going to get an immediate rematch. Well, they, he's going to get a rematch in six months because there's no way Al Jermaine is well, fighting any anytime soon. Well, I just watched the post-fight uh, press conference, and according to Dana, he's fine. He went, uh, he went to the hospital. They cleared him. I don't know if they cleared con- concussion protocol or all that kind of stuff, but, I mean, all intents and purposes, he's okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, He's not like... Uh, really really bad shape or something like that but you have a really interesting thing that happened right now we have the first ever champion in UFC undisputed champion in UFC history who uh, won a title via disqualification which is no fault of his and it, he got put in a really awkward position he didn't want to win like that I don't think he's you know, dancing around celebrating I'm sure that he's still the part I mean it's better than losing right it's still better. It's not what he would yeah. want, but it's like, you know, it happened. It's not his fault either. So it's not ideal, but he can't do anything to change it, and he's the champ. So, But did, did you see the interview with Rogan after? Yeah. The way he's, like, he's crying. He didn't want to win it that yeah. way. And and it was a close fight. One, yeah. of the two, one or two of the judges had Aljo winning. Yeah. One, I think one judge had Aljo winning. I thought... I thought Jan was winning clearly. I mean, I, those scorecards were a little weird to me. I thought I, I thought, yeah, was, I thought Jan was winning, but I didn't think Aljamain was out of it. You know, he, he was still in the fight, sort of thing, and he could have, yeah, you know, he could have won still. It was possible, yeah. unlikely, but possible. No, maybe not on the cards. But you know, he could have got him. He could have taken him down. He could have got his back. Something along those lines. He wasn't out of the fight. Well, no, certainly not. Now that we know what the scoring cards were, I mean, literally, one judge had him. Sorry, there's a. If you can hear this on the audio, there's a fucking dump truck outside in reverse. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking siren <laughs> shitting in your ears. Uh, anyway. Uh, I lost my train of thought. That's stupid fucking sorry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, so it's look. It's not Aljo's fault. And one judge had him winning, and the other judge I think had Yana by one round, and there was a round and a half left. Yeah. So it, the fight was up for grabs. Is my point. Anyway, it was competitive. Yana was clearly winning, I think, but it was competitive. 
Um, and it's a crazy situation they're in. There's going to be a new, there's a currently a new champion in less than ideal circumstances, but what a crazy, what a crazy finish. What, what did you make of Aljamain's performance up to that point? I thought he was, he was doing some very strange things. He seemed to have no fear of Jan's grappling or Jan taking his back. He was literally turning his back into him at times so and spinning el- elbows and just seemed unconcerned. Well, he, he's funky, right? And yeah. I, I think he needs to be funky to beat someone like Jan. I think Jan's more technical. First of all, Jan's takedown defense was on point. I was like in and out of watching it uh, during the fight because I was teaching at the same time. And then I went back and watched it later. And I remember at the gym, every time I, I looked over, uh, Aljamain's on his back. And he was always the one trying to instigate the, the takedown, right? So, I mean, Jan's takedown defense was on point. He was touching him up. It was both competitive. But but clearly, Jan was shutting Sterling's game down, which his game was to take him down and get his back, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, man, it was weird. It's one of those things that there's no, like, right answer to. But uh, I'll take this off because I'm obscuring my, my face. Um, so, I don't know. It was a weird one, hey? Never, yeah. This is the first time this has ever happened. You got to assume they're just going to run it back as soon as they're able to. First time it's ever happened. Probably should have happened to John Jones a few times. <laughs> with all of his fouls, the most foul, the most foul UFC fighter. Of pokey, all time. pokey. Yeah, but uh, you know they're going to do the rematch. The bantamweights were on fire on this on this fight card. You had those fights. Dominic Cruz looked great. I mean, physically he looked great. If you pull up, you do me a favor, man. We'll, we'll just touch on Dominic Cruz while we're dealing with the bantamweights. First of all, I love me some Dominic Cruz. I love to see him do well. What a legend that guy is, man. I, in my opinion, he's the bantamweight goat. Um, his body looked good. Pull up his weigh-in photo from this, and then pull up his weigh-in photo maybe from his last fight or his last two fights. He looked pretty doughy like before. You can tell that he's lost a little bit from like when he was in his late 20s where he was like shredded and thick. And then uh, his body now for this fight looked good. He looked like he was in damn good shape. And Casey Kenny is no joke. That guy's good. He's unranked, but he's he's right there. And uh, I thought Dominic Cruz looked good. I thought he had a really nice takedown, that knee tap in the third round to, to get him down. Uh, yeah, just pull up one of those weigh-in photos right there. I'm just trying to find... I don't know if you can find it before or after, but it's a very specific request. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm trying to find today's and can't find it. Really? No. Uh, Okay. I've got I've got one four nine bizarrely, but I mean you can see that he's just he's got kind of a doughy body, like recently he didn't didn't when he was in his twenty. Oh, he looks pretty fucking good there. Is that the recent one? Is that today? That's what apparently that's that looks like today's. Put, put that up there. Uh, maybe that's not today's. Anyway, whatever. The point is, if you go back and you look at him in his last few fights before this one, he, he was carrying a little bit of body fat. This fight, he looked great physically. He looked great. Um, and I was really happy to see him get a win. My vote is TJ versus Dom rematch for number one contender fight. Whoever wins that fight gets the winner of Jan and Sterling. Corey Sanhagen could wait. Yeah, they might they might stick Corey Sanhagen in there with uh, with TJ Dillashaw. I don't know, but my money is make that rematch because that fight was razor close. That first fight between Cruz and, and Dillashaw. I want to see that fight bad. And you know Dillashaw's coming off a of fucking suspension. You shouldn't give him like. I don't think he deserves Sandhagen right away. He he got caught with an extremely, extremely illegal drug and got knocked the fuck out while he was on PEDs. So I don't think you reward him with a number one contender fight. Give him Cruz. If he gets through Cruz, maybe give him Sandhagen. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, he shouldn't be walking straight back into... It won't, it won't be a title fight because of what happened, but yeah, he shouldn't be walking into the number one contender slot either. Yeah. Like, and, and, and him versus Cruz is a fight everyone will watch. Yeah, that was a great fight. That was one of the most technical fights of all time. Yeah. And one of the best heartwarming stories of all time because Cruz, mm-hmm. after his four surgeries and five years out, was able to come back and beat him and become a two-time champion. What a legend. Um, yeah, all right, dude. I, I was, was going to say, I, I think that's right. the only thing with Cruz, though, that, like, will his body hold up? Because when, when did he fight last? Uh, the loss to Cejudo. Yeah. But, but that was his... He, he's had two fights in, I think, five years. So And those two kind of came relatively quickly for him. Right? For him, that came relatively quickly. But Cejudo beat up his legs bad and chopped him down like a tree. Yeah. I thought it was an early stoppage, but Cejudo was clearly winning anyway. Um, all right, man. Let's go to the juicy juice. Let's go to the main event. There you go. Uh, Israel Adesanya and Jan Blahovic. Again, I thought the commentary was really, really biased here. Uh, I remember watching this and 
Rogan was just talking on and on. Like, in the first two rounds, he was like, oh, he's picking on part. He's picking on part. He's picking on part. Oh, he's he's outclassing him. He says something along those lines. And I was like, what? I thought Jan was winning. The first round I gave to Adesanya. Yeah. Uh, he was... I think he... First of all, Izzy's one of the best fainters in the history of the UFC. He'll throw, like, ten feints to one strike. You never know when he's going to enter. Problem is, I think he was fainting a little too much. I remember when um, TJ Dillashaw... F- Knocked out uh, Cody Garbrandt the second time. Uh, Dwayne Lugwig in his corner said, "Like you're do- you're fainting. You're doing. Too- you have to actually stick something out there because he was just doing. It- and it's a fine line, right, between like trying to sell your fakes and and all that kind of stuff. And I remember him saying that. And I and as like the third and fourth round went on, especially like once the fourth started, I just remember thinking he was fainting a little too much because he would faint. He would draw the reaction. Jan would overcommit. Think like Izzy likes to turn his hip." Right, he likes to boom, like fake that, yeah. that kick coming, and uh, he gets the reaction that he wants. Right, he sees what Bohovich is thinking, but then I didn't see him fire the the strike to like penetrate the guard based on the reaction that Bohovich was giving him, and it was weird, right? Because is he so flashy? He's got so much. He looks so slick. He moves like a fucking snake, and Bohovich is just like he literally looks like just a. Uh, he's like. Just, know, just a solid, like, Polish mahogany cabinet. Just, just workman, right? He's just workman-like. He just walks you down, throws really simple shit, hard left kick to the body, like that. Well, jab, cross, and left hooks. I mean, that's pretty much what you got with him. And uh, simple, effective. And then in the fourth and fifth round, he started taking him down. Yeah. He was able to get big takedowns, and that's where the weight difference really, really came in. I feel like Jan was probably 20 pounds at least heavier than Izzy on the fight day yeah I, I think um, I said it to you when, when I got here today that like well there's a reason they have weight classes and yeah. that's why because at, at the end of the, eventually power and you know strength and size is going to tell out no matter how good you are and Izzy is re- that good but I think once Jan was like, oh, I can take him down and just sit on top of him, I'll do that then. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, in the striking, I feel like the the weight difference can be mitigated a little bit if you're elusive and you're quick, which I think was working for Izzy in the first couple rounds. I mean, you think of somebody like, uh, you know, the UFC heavyweights or the boxing heavyweights, it's never always the biggest guy that wins. And frankly, it's typically not. Yeah. Right? I mean, Deontay Wilder is one of the lightest heavyweights ever. I mean, he's tall as shit, but he weighs like 215. Mike Tyson, 220, right? And then you got like Tyson Fury, who's like a giant, a monster, and Anthony Jock. But like generally, like lighter weight heavyweights have been very successful, almost to the point where there would be no difference from them if they're cruiserweights or if they're light heavyweights, right? So I think that can work on the feet, but once you got that guy on top of you and he's got you in a cross face and an underhook, man, you're not moving. I was a little disappointed that Jan wasn't trying to put it on him a little more. But he didn't need to. He had the position. He's securing the position. He's got the top control. Izzy's not doing shit. His shoulders are pinned down. Yeah. Right? So he was able to grind that out. And I couldn't help... I couldn't help be happy for Jan. I feel like this cemented his legacy outside of John Jones. Right? Because John Jones vacated. He kind of had a little bit of this paper champ feel to him. No disrespect to Jan at all. Only because John Jones is John Jones. Yeah. He's so dominant. No one ever beat him. He was the champ for 10 years. He never lost. He just changed the weight class. And then most people kind of, I feel like, took the Dominic Reyes win where he won the title as a little bit of a fluke. Yeah. And then I feel like this really cements him because he beat a top pound-for-pound guy who was undefeated, fought at heavyweight in kickboxing. Let's not pretend like Izzy can't fight bigger guys. He fought Yoel Romero, who's now a light heavyweight. He fought a lot of guys who are huge. Paulo Costa is huge, right? He's fought big middleweights, um, and he's shown that he can be effective against them. And he's shown that he was able to be effective in some areas with Jan. But when that guy gets on top of you and he's in the clinch and he gets gets your body locked or gets the double leg, then you really feel that weight. Yeah, that that was the big difference. And I think, like you say, maybe Jan could have pulled it on him in the fourth and fifth round, but he clearly thought he'd won at least one of the first three. So then why risk it? I was a little worried, honestly, because Jan clearly got the last two. Mm. The first three were a little... I thought Izzy definitely won the first... Two and three, I mean, the significant strikes are pretty close. Um, I feel like Jan was landing the cleaner shots, but he was landing maybe few. Izzy was busier with his feints and his footwork and all that kind of stuff. But I was actually really happy with the judging in this context that I'm glad the judges saw through Izzy's flash, right? Because a lot of people, you see that concept fading, you see him moving around firing that jab, faking question mark kicks. 
that can actually deceive an untrained eye because as you would think that that's something that it looks more effective than just the guy walking forward throwing one twos and switch kicks to the body and all that kind of stuff so i was really happy to see that they were able to notice the harder shots land i mean even it seemed like they got rogan right like is he got rogan <laughs> Because he, he said it multiple times in the first couple of rounds. And I was like, what are you watching? I, and everyone's like, do you think that? I was like, no, I think Blahovich is winning. And then at the end, I kind of got mind fucked by the whole thing. And I was like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I doubted myself, right? And then yeah. it was four rounds to one for Blahovich almost across the board. And I was like, okay, they saw through the, the flash to actually see the substance. And uh, Polish power, man. Polish power. He's, I, I, when they went to the decision, I did think at one stage, oh, but they're going to give the fight to Izzy because they're going to have given him the first three rounds. But yeah, they didn't and saw through it. And there's no two ways about it. Like, Jan won the fight. Yeah, it's like, over now. Yeah. And now you got the two, two old dogs. Glover's, Glover. the number, Glover's the number one contender. So you're going to have like 38, 39 versus 40 fucking two for the light heavyweight <laughs> title. <laughs> just John Jones at a heavyweight going I mean the problem is Glover's chin he's been rocked in all of his fights recently he somehow found a way to win but if Jan touches that chin you're going to have a problem and I don't think I don't know if Glover's taking taking Jan down could you imagine if Glover won just retire immediately <laughs> yeah just, just don't defend the belt that's stupid just retire although then you might get a little paper champ I just because John Jones crushed him so bad but whatever man you, you know, you set your individual legacies. And uh, I'm glad that Jan was able to cement his own. Yeah. And uh, prove that he actually deserves to be there. Because everyone was really high on Adesanya. A lot of people were talking that he could beat John Jones. Oh, people were saying Adesanya is going to win that fight, then go up to heavyweight. Yeah. You're like, uh, no. Triple champ shit <laughs> yep. again. But size, size matters. So it was a pretty eventful card, man. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, can we hit up the... The uh, undercard, the prelims and stuff, because there was a few r- totally worthy shout-outs. Did we talk about Santos Ratchet? No, that one was a bit of a wreckage, I think. It was boring. It was boring, <laughs> which kind of a bummer. I thought that would be an awesome fight. Um, Tiago's old man, he just came off of uh, that horrific knee surgeries that he had after he fought Jones, and then he lost to Glover, right? Didn't Glover beat him after that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And so he looks a little slower. He looks a little less aggressive. Rakic looks like he might be a real threat. Um, so keep an eye on him. He's definitely... He's a young guy, too. I think he's like 28, 29, something yeah. like that. He's got a big upside. Big ass light heavyweight, man. He's a big boy. So kind of a boring fight, but he emerged as probably the next top contender. He might get a fight with... I mean, who could he fight? I think he was ranked three, so... He's probably due for that shot after Glover. So we see how that pans out. He might get might need one more fight. But he's due for a big one. And then uh what was and then what was the other fight in the main card? There's one other one I thought. Four five fights, right? Uh the one um the one when you've just did the breakdown from we talked about it. Cruz was the prelim. Yeah, Cruz was prelims. Uh Islam, Makachev. Oh, it? right. Yes. We are in we already discussed that. Yes. We, we, we talked about it a little bit, right? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. We just broke it down outside as well. So anyway, in the Islam Makachev, we'll, we'll just touch on him a, a little bit. Uh, he hit that Von Flew choke, that head and arm choke, beautiful <clears throat> choke. You guys should all train that. Uh, it's real sneaky. And, you know, the only thing I was disappointed about in this fight is, like, Islam has had, I believe, seven or eight fights in the in the UFC. He's, according to all and takes accounts. Fifteen. Ranked, he was ranked 15 today. Yeah, and he still is not fighting top 10 guys. What are they doing? I'll tell you what they're doing. The top 10 guys are going, no, I'm not fighting him. Yeah, but come on, man. They got to give him a, a, a good fight. Like, no disrespect to Drew Dober. He'd won some fights, but he's not ranked. You can pull up Islam Makachev, right? Everyone says that he's basically the heir apparent to Khabib. And he is not getting any good fights. Like, he's not fighting top 10, top 15 opponents. He's pretty much smashing everybody. He lost one fight in the UFC by knockout. And it was kind of a fluke to a guy who's got kind of a middling record. I can't remember his name. I checked earlier. Uh, can you put that on the main? Yeah. So, yeah, Adriana Martin. So, he's kind of went at one and lost a lot. KO'd him. I think that was just a, a kind of a flash KO. But so I mean, seven fight win streak now. Seven fight. Seven fight win streak, and he's not fighting top ten guys. If you get to eight, nine fights, you're dealing with, like, top win streaks of all time. He's not fighting in the top five, the top 10, or even the top 15. What are they doing? I mean, are, are that many people saying no to him? Like, But I haven't seen, yeah, given his performance today, and I, 
yeah, winning streak is on. If you're in the top ten in there, you're like, do you want to fight him? No, no, I do not. Yeah, I quite like being top ten. I guess, but man, they they can't. I mean, what are they going to do now? Is it well, be fourteen they, and zero before he gets in the top yeah, five? Like they're going to have to give him a significant jump up the rankings. Yeah, like I mean, he's got it. He should be in the top five, and mind the top ten. So they've got to put him there, and then someone's got to fight him. I mean, even still, like he was ranked fourteenth today, right? Fifteenth, I think. Okay, so fourteen, whatever it was. Yeah. Not, 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 yeah, not top 10 is the crazy part. He's not going to jump up, up after beating Drew Dober. No, true. So, I mean, what, what do you do now? I mean, do you just jump him straight away to a top five guy? I mean, because then you're dealing with a massive skill uh, check, right? I mean, you're dealing with a huge jump in skill level. So, I don't know. I don't know what they do with him. But, uh, I mean, according to everybody, he seems like he's the next Khabib. I don't see it necessarily yet. I don't think he's going to be Khabib. Maybe he can win a title. I think he can be a contender, but he is not. I've not seen enough from him to prove that he can be a champion. He doesn't totally strike me as a Khabib yet. Uh, but he's young, and he, he's obviously very skilled, though. He's got a lot of tools. He's more of a striker than Khabib, which to me presents a little bit of a problem because it's way harder to control striking and the chaos of striking than the chaos of grappling, which is what makes Khabib so dominant. Uh, but he's no question of, and I do like seeing a little bit of that Khabib style in him. You can see a little bit of there. He looks like him, right? I mean, trained by the same guy, trained by uh, Abdul Manaf, Khabib's yeah. dad, and you can see a little bit of the, the style. He's a little bit more striking heavy, but D- DC's uh, the breakdown that DC was doing between rounds of his wrestling was fantastic. Yeah, DC's like, so good. Yeah, just showing uh, showing that he did it one way one time, and he's like so. The second time round, the guy's trying to stop him from doing it, so he just changes to this. He's a brilliant breakdown of the technique. And DC knows him well. Yeah. They all train at American, uh, aka American Kickboxing Academy, where Khabib trains. So he's seen him train for years. And the people, the what makes me believe it is that those people are so high on him. Yeah. Like DC, they all talk about how good he is. So definitely one to watch, and that's why they put him on the main card, even though he's not fighting a ranked opponent, right? And then, uh, man, the undercard. In terms of pure value of fights, the undercard was a banger. Was brilliant. It was a banger, man. It was better than the main event. A couple awesome fights. We already talked about Dominic Cruz. Sung Yudong. Man, that Kyler Phillips guy is good. You see the crazy shit he was throwing? Yeah. He's throwing wheel kicks, jumping kicks, spinning back kicks, flying everything. Like, really slick takedowns. And Sung Yudong is one of the biggest prospects in the sport. I mean, he made his UFC debut when he was 19. He's only 23 now, yeah, I think. I yeah, I know. He's, so. been fight, he's five years in the UFC, and he's 20, what, you said 23? Yeah, I think so. So, I mean, he's still got a huge upside. Uh, but that shows you how good Kyler Phillips is. He, he's one to watch, because Song Yudong is no joke. And he looked really, really good. I'm going to keep an eye on this guy for sure. Um, going, That was a good fight. Watch that fight. Joseph Benavidez, uh, he lost. But this Askar Askarov guy, you, you hear his story? No. He's deaf. Oh, oh, he's dead. Right. Okay, and, he, and he's a uh, Paralympic, Paralympic. He's champion. a Paralympic champion. What a great story! I saw story. someone put today that he was a Paralympic champion. I was like, is he? Why? <laughs> <laughs> and then didn't bother was researching it. Now I know. Yeah, I think they mentioned on the broadcast. I don't know to what severity, but apparently he has to wear a hearing aid, so it's like quite severe. And they, they mentioned on the broadcast that they they think he you know can't really hear much from the corner and all that kind of stuff. But he looks great, and what a great story. What a great story he is. Because now, the only person that he... He never lost. The only person he went to a draw with was Brandon Moreno. The guy who just went to a draw with Figueredo. Yeah. So, I mean, he's right there. They're the clear top three in the division. What a great story for him. Great name. Super marketable guy. Amazing story. He's going to get a big fight next. And it'll be quite interesting to see the public's reaction to him. I think he's got a great story. I didn't even know. He's had several fights in the UFC. Mm -hmm. I've seen him fight. But I didn't know that story. So that was really uh, interesting. And they might, what a great story there. A Paralympic champion guy who's like deaf, being crushing people. Yeah. I mean, he, he dominated. Uh, the, the, that was the only one I didn't see today. Mm-hmm. My kids were in the swimming pool at the time. I had to watch them, you know. Yeah. Just you so know, they don't drown. Your kids that drowning sort of thing. Or yeah. <laughs> Paralympic champion fighting. Dude, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so he's one to watch. He's, he's, I think, the very clear number three in the division behind Figueredo and Moreno. And uh, what a great story. Great, really, really great story. Great wrestling, good striking, but man, his grapple. He was floating on Benavidez like like water. Everywhere Benavidez would go, he just floated right on top of him. Amazing stuff. And uh, all right, let's keep going. Let's knock this thing out and then get on to some other nonsense. And then the crazy finish one. 
Oh, the Kai 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 And what's the other guy's name? Bon Torin? Yes, is that. I can't see it from here. Bon Torin, bon yes. Bon that will do. I mean, that Brazilian Bon Torin, he looked really good. He is all over Kai Car France, right? And this was another one that had a weird ending. A couple weird endings tonight, right? Yeah. He was all over him for the whole round, like threatening chokes. He had him like under the chin, but he was doing a great job fighting the second hand. And uh, and then by the end, he, he caught him with that punch, dropped him. He kind of face planted him a little bit, right? Yeah. And then uh, he's like Herb Dean comes in and he touches him a little bit. That's why he thought the fight was over. Yeah. I think he kind of turned away. He, he was so weird. Off. Yeah, he was trying to do what it looked like. He caught him and thought, he's done, he's out. I'm going to do a walk-off KO. And then Herb Dean comes running in and does touch him. So yeah. then he thinks, oh, it's definitely over. So it circles <laughs> around the ring. Herb Dean seems to say, oh, no, it's not over. So he runs back in to hit him. The, uh, the other guys can't defend himself. So then Herb Dean's like, oh, no, it's over now. You just don't hit him. Well, it was weird. So weird. There was like a, a look between uh, Kai Kai France and Herb Dean. Because like, he walked off, he was on the other yeah. side of the ring. And then they look at each other. And then Kai Car France realizes that maybe Herb didn't stop the fight, so he sprints <laughs> over with his fist out, and then Herb looks at <laughs> the other guy, realizes he can't defend himself, and he sees Kai Car France running over like he's about to sledgehammer him, and then Herb's like, no! So in, in, in one sense, he fucked it up, but in the other sense, he saved it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if he had let him land out, oh. where he's like sprinting over. And, and, and like, the guy's literally like, sort of looking up. <laughs> no, no way he's defending himself against yeah. it coming in. So yeah. And then he threw his mouthpiece at him because I think he took him a minute to realize what had happened. And then yeah. he thought, it's like, dude, he's... But the reason it took him a minute to realize what was happened is he'd been knocked out. I mean, he went like yeah. limped and kind of face... But that was a great fight. Yeah, he's been... I mean, come like... Victory from the brink of defeat, right? It was a, it was a great. There were two of those, man. Uh, can you go down to the undercard? There's a, a Nigerian guy, Kennedy something or other. Uh, Usman was in his corner. It's the under, 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 undercard. <laughs> I think it might have been the first fight of the night. So you have to go to the early, early prelims. Uh, Kennedy, some crazy uh, Nigerian last name, fought, <laughs> fought a guy who I hadn't seen fight before. It ended up winning fight of the night. Excellent fight. Guy gets wobbled with a head kick in the first five seconds of the fight. Ends up in a defensive shell for two minutes. Like, doesn't throw a single punch. Looked like he was dead to rights. And Coming then in. came back and smashed him. Yeah, yeah, that's Bring it. Bring it up. Yeah, that's it. Kennedy in Choku. You have fun with that. <laughs> I think it's in Choku. Uh, and Carlos Uber. Yeah, that's it. That was a great fight. That would end up winning fight of the night. Go watch that fight. That was crazy. I didn't think that guy was going to win. He got head kicked in the first, like, five seconds of the fight. Like, head kicked, wobbled, stood, was in his shell for, like, two minutes. Didn't throw a single strike back. And then found a way in the next round to come back from behind. They were both hurting each other. That was a banger. Really, really good fight. And uh, that was pretty much all the notable stuff. Can you run through it again real quick? One more uh, time? Yeah, bring it up. Because I watched almost everything. Tim Elliott got the win. That guy, Sean Brady, beat Jake Matthews. He's one to watch. Jake Matthews is a, considered to be a very, 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 very high prospect. And uh, Sean Brady, I believe it was his UFC debut, managed to get a win. So keep an eye out on him. Other than that, that pretty much covers it, man. Really good night of fights. Good finishes. Really good card. Certain fights didn't deliver, but they don't all have to. Right? No, the, the main ones did. I mean, even though the Al Jermaine one's a controversial finish, it, it was a good fight up to the finish sort of thing. So all the three main events went, yeah, good fights, worth watching. I just can't believe all the people shitting on Aljo. Yeah. I mean, how it's not his fault. Like, that was fucked up. That was a brutal knee. And, everyone, you know, people are calling him... You know, they're just saying it was a dive. They're saying all this kind of stuff. But if he had gotten up, it he continued was like out of it. Yeah, like and people, he, and people at the gym were like, "Oh, he's faking it." It's like, what, dude? Imagine pure. First of all, they fought for twenty minutes already. Yeah. Right. So you're fighting the best bantamweight in the world, one of the best probably ever, in his prime, in a hard fight, competitive fight. You've already taken a lot of damage. You've been fighting for twenty minutes. Then you eat that, and you still have, I think, seven more minutes to go. And he's fine, right? He's, yeah. So he's not slowing down. Only one person's slowing down, right? And then what? You're, you're putting it on him. You expect him to go and take this additional brain damage because of a flagrant foul. I mean, I get the sentiment that it kind of sucks, but not Aljo's fault, man. Yeah. I was going crazy when they were trying to get him to continue and stuff like that. Like, I was you know, screaming at the TV, like, you've got to stop this. Yeah. People have died from similar 
situations not like I said not like I said earlier not necessarily in MMA but like rugby and sports like that the rule is if you think they've maybe got a concussion take them out the game yeah. like don't go can you keep going yeah of course and you don't get to reward Piotr Jan for a flagrant no. foul like if, if they both let it go then that doesn't mean anything what are they going to take a point okay here's another hundred punches on top of your concussion yeah. Like, I mean, you just can't reward that type of behavior. You can make the argument to make it a no contest, but then also he just retains. Right? Then he still retains the title. So, I mean, I, I think you can debate what the appropriate reaction is there, but you have to have some kind of line drawn between an accidental and a flagrant foul. And I think it has to be accidental, no contest, flagrant, you lose. Yeah. I, I, mean, I think... It's not the result anyone wanted. It's not how Al Jermaine would have wanted to win the title. But actually, the result's fair. Like, yeah. yeah. It's as fair as it can be. There are rules. There are fouls. You commit a yeah. foul. You have to punish them somehow. You can't just let him keep continue. That's insane. So, good night of fights. Uh, nice to have a good UFC card. This is one of the best on paper in terms of the people fighting in ages. So, really, really good stuff. I enjoyed watching it. Um, Ro- Rocky. <laughs> Rocky's up next week. We accidentally broke that one down last week. Yes. <laughs> But we can do a quick one. Is there anything else in there worth, worth talking about? Leon Edwards, Bilal Muhammad. We broke that down last week. Good fight. Got to go with Leon Edwards. Um, but Bilal Muhammad is a live dog. I really believe that. Um, what else is on there? Throw it up. Serkinov and Ryan Spann. That's a good fight. Ben Rothwell's fighting. Ooh, Dan Ige, Gavin Tucker. That's a good fight. Yeah, that's, that's not, not bad. Man. That's not bad. Dan oh, Ige, Angela Gavin Hill. Tucker. That'd be. Oh, Angela Hill. Ashley Yoder. That's good stuff, too. All right. Eric Anders is fighting. That's not bad, man. That's not bad. Solid fight. We'll break that bad boy down. Uh, Well, next week we're not doing a podcast, right? We'll put out some kind of content. Yeah. You got something on, so we'll put out something, though. And uh, All right, man. Let's get off the the MMA. What what else is going on? Should we talk about the... Talk about the apology? Yeah, the Andre Galvo, Gordon Ryan thing. Yeah, let me bring this one up. See See what your thoughts are on this one. I'll bring it up on the screen. So... I think it came out when um, I was down in the gym with you. Yeah. And I said, oh, is he breaking news? And then we both looked at it and went, oh, that's not what we expected. Yeah, it wasn't what I expected. First of all, no. first of all, to all the people who watched, <laughs> watched our video breaking down the Gordon Ryan slapping Andre Galvo, yes, we know he slapped him twice. Every single comment was like, he slapped him twice. He slapped him twice. I know. I read that he slapped him twice too, but I was specifically talking about the one that was on camera. And, uh, but your point is taken that he punked him twice. I, I get it. And uh, so, all right, so let's just break this down. So just a quick run through. Gordon Ryan gave Andre Galvo the old double bitch slap last week. (laughs) And, uh, you know, we kind of broke down what we thought, what our opinions were on it. Um, According to even Andre Galvo, Andre kind of started it, right, by being a little shitty to him. And then Gordon escalated it by slapping him and... And all this kind of stuff. So why don't you just do me a favor and read? Just read. The so I'm just trying to find, I thought it was there, but it's not. So I'm just trying to find it. So give me a second. Yeah. So uh, so Gordon slapped him, and then Andre was silent for a long time. I think he was trying to figure out what's the best way to to deal with it. But I don't know, man. I think he did basically what he did. Just to paraphrase, once he finds the article, we'll give you the full we'll give you the full rundown. But he basically just said he was wrong. Which, okay, anyway, let me keep continue before I comment on it. He basically said that I was wrong. He instigated the fight. Uh, Gordon went up to shake his hand. Andre flipped him off. And then he started talking shit to him. And then after the interview, he came over and started talking to him again, instigated it. And he said he forgave Gordon for slapping him. And uh, he apologized to Gordon. He apologized to his teammates and all the people that he is... You know, he's the leader of one of the biggest teams in, in jiu-jitsu, and he's a legend, a living legend. And so, honestly, I feel like you, you, you managed to find it? Uh, yeah, I can't bring it up, but I can read it out if you want me to. Yeah, sure. Let's, let's get the official... Uh, so, he said, I would like to apologize to my family, students, my team, the entire jiu-jitsu community for being involved in this situation. It was a sad situation. I am not proud of what happened. I was wrong from the beginning. I flipped off Gordon. I cursed at him. I tried to talk to him. I said mean things and the violence escalated. I recognized that I made a mistake and I knew that the consequences would come. I truly made a mistake being involved in all that even months ago. Well, here's the thing, right? Anytime you're in a violent altercation of any sort, 
once you say something like that, it's over, right? I mean, it's done. You can't like, you can't say to somebody, I'm sorry, I was wrong, my bad, I fucked this up, and then you still have that tension. Like, yeah. you have to let it go. I think a lot of people were kind of hoping. <laughs> Everyone that, was actually wanting him to go, fuck you, Gordon Ryan, let's yeah, have a super fight. Exactly, exactly. I think a lot of people were thinking that. And um, I was hoping I had my phone here. Is my phone over there? Uh, no. It's okay. I, I saved a picture for this exact situation that I'm clearly not prepared for. But I, I saved a picture because uh, Tom DeBlass, Gordon's coach, his oldest coach, his first coach before Danaher, who's a legend, he fought in the UFC, like an ADCC trials champion, like a legend, right? Yeah. Amazing jiu-jitsu. He commented on, I think it was a Jiu-Jitsu Times uh, article that they posted about it. And I think he had the best response. First of all, Tom DeBlass is awesome. Tom DeBlass is awesome. He had the, the greatest response where he said that um, that he would not have handled it like Andre did. He probably would have done something back. Clearly, Andre doesn't want to fight Gordon, mm. but he doesn't have to. He's a legend. He cemented his legacy regardless of this. And even though other people may have handled it differently or maybe thought he should have handled it differently, the reality is he doesn't have to fight Gordon. If he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. Yeah. And I really think that that's the way to do it. Like, hey, people probably thought he wish he would have reacted differently. Maybe he doesn't want to fight Gordon, I mean, which is all the body language and everything like that says. But that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. It doesn't make him a bitch. It doesn't make him all this kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's just fine that he doesn't have to do that. His legacy is set. And we still hope to see that match, obviously. But, like, with, with Galvo apologizing like this, he had a chance to... Make a run for it, do some crazy media build up, get a big payday if he wanted to, win or lose, and he chose not to go that route. He de escalated this situation completely by apologizing, saying that he was wrong. And, uh, you know, us just believe people out there who wanted to see, been dying to see this match, probably not the way that we wanted to do it. But it is the other option, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I was um, yeah. impressed by him doing it because he could have come out and, yeah giving it all that but I think he's looked at his position as like he's a head coach he's probably you know got kids in his academy and stuff like that and thought about well you know what lesson do I set for them yeah yeah. So. and he's also older he's, he's like at the end of his day Gordon's right in his prime you know he probably just reading the writing on the wall right he got a little out of hand he realized what he'd done and then he's just trying to figure it out I still hope they do the match because I don't care who wins right I mean it just doesn't but I just want to see it. Yeah. Like, I don't think Galvo loses face by losing a jiu-jitsu match, right? It's just part of the thing. Like, most likely he will lose. There's a chance he'll win. It exists, right? It's statistically less likely, I would say, but it exists. And you just try. Right? Yeah. I would just like to see that just because it's a great, fun match. It's two of the goats. And it would be fun to, to, to see, but Andre doesn't have to. He's, no. He's done his thing. He's one of the best, most successful competitors, gi and no gi, to ever do it. And, uh, you know... I think he handled it one way. <laughs> he, he handled it a way that he can. And, uh, you know, you got to let him do what he wants to do. It's his life. He gets to choose how he wants to live his life. And I think in his mind, he took the high road. And I think he was trying to preserve his image. And he actually thought he acted out of character. And that's why he felt the need to apologize to it, right? He's, he's trying to be a leader, leader of men and women. And you can't go flipping people yeah. off when they come over to shake your hand, even if there's beef, and then get over and start shit talking to some like you know. I don't know if you've ever done it though, but like if you've ever seen Red and gone off at someone, and you do feel a fucking idiot afterwards. Yeah. You're like, oh, why did I do that? Why yeah. didn't I just? And he's a grown ass man with wife and kids and all that kind of stuff, and an academy, and as I said, a leader of a lot of people. A lot of people respect him, and you know, I think he did what he thought he should do, and I think if he doesn't want to fight, he made the right move. He could have Conor McGregor it and started go, gone way overboard and built it if he had a partner, right? Like if he was Chael Sonnen, right? Because again, Chael doesn't have to win. It's it's about the hype. It's the business. It's the it's the thing. And when you do that, you risk the the loss. If he wanted to really get after it, he could have been a part of the biggest super fight in history. Maybe if he would have really gamed it up, then he could have got that half a million or that million or whatever. But he's at that place where he doesn't want to do that. And that's fine too. Yeah, I still want to see it. Yeah, I, still, <laughs> I can't. I can't. Still want to see the fight though, I but just, you, know, you can still. It's still very marketable though. You can market. Yeah, you know, Gordon Ryan is the American hothead, and you can. Uh, yeah, 
Mark uh, Galvao is like the calm jujitsu sensei masters. I'd still watch that. Yeah, I'd still, still get watch the shit out of it, dude. It'd be a great fight. Just let him do it, man. It's supposed to happen in the next ADCC anyway. Mm-hmm. So I think the pressure's still on Galvao a little bit to do it because he still has time. ADCC is in what a year and a half or something like that. It's every two years, right? Yeah, I think so. And they, yeah, you know, maybe one year from now. Because whoever won the absolute is supposed to fight whoever won the super fight. That's typically what they do, right? Yeah. And Galvo won the super fight against Pena. I think it was Pena. And Gordon won the absolute. So that is typically what they do. I still want to see that, but whatever, man. They don't do it. Gordon's going to get some other good matches. And uh, I think Galvo handled it as well as he could have, all things considered. Yeah. All right, man. What else we got? Is that pretty... Is there any other news? I don't think I... Did I send you anything else? No. That's pretty much it, right? In the... Fight MMA news wasn't anything else super interesting. No, uh, Yoel Romero signed for Bellator. You see that one? Yeah, so. he's, a, he's in the he's got Rumble first round. Oh, shit. yeah, oh, you haven't seen that. You haven't seen <laughs> no, that I didn't, I didn't know that. The Bellator light heavyweight tournament. The Oda Machida is in it, Ryan Bader's in it, Yoel Romero's in it, Anthony Johnson is in it. Actually, I just saw a picture of him. He looks slim, he trimmed down a lot. He used to look swole. But uh, you can maybe you find the tournament first, but then there's a picture of Anthony Johnson where he looks he looks like he used to look in the UFC, like slimmer, still jacked, but but way slimmer. This Bellator light heavyweight tournament is no joke. It is no joke. See if can bring that. Look at this. There hasn't been a tournament this good outside of the UFC since the old Strike Force tournament that Cormier won. Yeah, put this up on the main dude. Look at that shit. You got Ryan Bader, Machida first round. You got Corey Anderson and <laughs> Oh my God, try to give that a And piece. someone else. This guy's good, though. Yeah. This guy is really good. I know who he is. I can't pronounce his name. I can't even see it on the screen, though. But And then you got on the other side. Can you zoom in a little bit, man? I can't actually read anything. Phil Davis. I can just see That's his face. It's fighting. Someone in that top right corner. Yadim. It's really hard to... The image isn't clear. Uh, I got Yadim Nemkov. Okay. And then you have uh, Rumble and Yoel first round. Yeah. I mean, but just the regular names. Machida. Bader, Corey Anderson. Corey Anderson is still a top five global ranked light heavyweight. Okay, uh, Bader, Machida, Yoel, Yoel and Anthony Johnson first round. That is fucking That's crazy. Exciting. That is fucking crazy. And then, you know, Phil Davis is in there too. That is a damn good bracket. Poor Machida. He just needs to get out of there. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's one of the goats, right? He's, he's like one of my favorite fighters, but he has no business in there with these guys. Because Yoel already knocked him out. Bader already beat him, I think. Phil Davis already beat him. He's just a little bit over over the hill. Uh, and, there was a, uh, one championship. Let's dip our toes into that a little bit. There was a one on uh, Friday. Did you watch it? No. No, I mean neither. Bin, Which binge watch it. Can you pull it up real quick? Binge watching WandaVision. It's just so. Oh yeah. Are yeah. You, is it good? Oh, it's very good. Oh, I've seen it yet. We started Mandalorian. I just got Disney Plus. So yeah. We started that. Anyway, we'll we'll break down these one fights as as they come. Uh, there's just too much to do. Too much, too much stuff to do. But I would like to encourage all of you uh, to check out my video on the head and arm choke, also known as the Von Flu choke, which is uh, the the submission that Islam Makachev finished Drew Dober with. That is a sick move. Once you get the pressure down, it will help you with all of your other arm triangles. And uh, oh yeah, pull that up. Emilio fought on that card. I, yeah, let's see who else is here. Okay, so this is the one. We're looking at the one right now. I saw the knockout from the main event. That was a Keep going down a little bit. Let me see who else we got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going. I want to see Emilio. Yeah, there he is. I know he lost. He lost to that crazy elbow, man. Yeah. Oh, you know, so yeah, Emilio's I saw that in the highlights as well. That was the elbow, a, right? Yeah. Oh. Emilio is another fellow podcaster who's been in Singapore and done a lot in, in Southeast Asia. And he's got a, a podcast that you can follow called The Honey Badger Hour. Uh, so shout out to you, Emilio. That was a tough lot. That elbow was ridiculous. It was like a step in, boom, tomahawk elbow, <laughs> stiffed him up. It's tough to train for that one, man. Not a lot of people have the balls to throw that elbow. Uh, you, you have it there? I uh, just want to see if we can pull it up because it is insane. I mean, it's a straight it. step in, boom. The range was crazy. Like, he really darted in there and blasted it. I think it was on one's, one's Instagram. But really, really great elbow. That's a tough loss, man. By all accounts, I've met him a couple times, but uh, I know Major is really tight with him. All the jugger- old juggernaut guys were tight with him because that's where he used to be. And uh, is this it? Was that the no. other one? Nah, I think it was a different one. All right. 
Anyway, man, we can, we can wrap this thing up. Um, anything else to, to hit up before we go? We got the UFC next week. We got the fight videos coming. Other than that, no. Nah. Just, uh, <laughs> just like I said, just been binge watching Disney Plus. Now it's out in Singapore. <laughs> That's about it. Huh? Well, next week, next week there's no podcast on, but we'll do our best to, to put out some kind of content for y'all. So we maybe was, if people uh, want to break down of the Nunes finish. Yeah, let me know if you want that that back triangle. Uh, it's it's a really good move. We literally already filmed it one time, and then the the audio was just so shit that we decided not to release it. But if you want that video, please leave a comment, and we'll, we'll happily do that. And if you oh snap, found we it. found it. Should we finish on this? Yes. Right. This is nasty, man. This is just. Look at that. Oh, let me just... Uh, Straight step in elbow. Let it Sorry. run over one more time. Sorry, Emilio, man, but this is a crazy elbow. Look at that. Oh! <laughs> Tough to train for that, man. Tough to train for that. That is just one of those techniques that... Oh. It's very difficult to land. You're moving forward in a straight line. It's dangerous to throw it. Oh, doggy. It's a, it's a tough one, but it's a beautiful elbow. Just step in. Boom! Straight up the middle from, while you're diving in. From the camera angle, it, I, you couldn't see that he actually hit him with the elbow. I know. When I saw the highlight, I was like, and oh, how's he knocked him out? Oh, no, other way around. Up, man. Yeah. That's a brutal elbow. Train your elbows, man. I mean, elbows and knees, a lot of the, especially the modern MMA, is tends to be like American or Dutch-style kickboxing. A lot of punches and kicks. Not so many elbows and knees, but so when you see a crazy knockout, elbow knockout like that, it does stand out. I was like, oh, shit. Um, all right, guys. Well, let's finish up here. Keep it short and sweet tonight. We're going to go watch a uh, fellow alum of the podcast, Fuck a Fuzz. He's got a comedy show uh, at the Esplanade here in Singapore. So we're going to go check that bad boy out pretty soon uh, here tonight. So uh, thank you all for listening. Please like, subscribe, comment on this video. It really means a lot. Uh, we've got some banners coming in to the studio pretty soon so we can get some pictures off the wall and get a little more color in here. Me and Jake are going to go shopping pretty soon and get some new mics and some lights to try to spruce this thing up a little bit. Uh, so it's always a work in progress. I think this is episode 47, right? Yes. So we're getting there, man. We got some we got some numbers on us. We're starting to get some episodes behind us. You have to, who, who are you going to get for your big 50? That's, I was just thinking about that yesterday. We should do something <laughs> special for the 50th. We could do Ron and Steven again, do like the, the three out of four horsemen. Those are always good. Maybe that's the move. It's yeah. been a while since we've had them on. Just get drunk and shit talk. Or get drunk in front of Ron and make him super jealous because he doesn't drink anymore. <laughs> you so gonna we have just to get, get super belligerent, piss him off. You're going to have to get a smaller desk. <laughs> I know. I know. i got this. we gotta, we got to fix this room properly. <laughs> anyway, everybody, thank you. If you enjoy this podcast and you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Um, otherwise, I appreciate all of you. You can find the podcast on Apple, Podbean, Spotify, uh, Spotify Google, although apparently Google has some problems. Uh, I was told that downloading it on the Google Podcast app has some issue that apparently Jake told me is quite common. For once, it's not us. It looks like it's the Google Podcast app's got fault with it. So, but I don't know. I've never tried it. I didn't even know Google had a podcast app. So. Yeah, I mean, we, it took me ages to get it on there, but we finally managed to get it on Google, and apparently there's some issue with it. So if you're trying to download the, the audio, may I suggest you try Spotify, Apple, or uh, Podbean. Because uh, Podbean, you can just download it to your phone for whatever. Apple, if you have Android, or Spotify, if you have anything else. It's totally free on Spotify, so there's no, no you don't have to pay for premium or anything like that. And... Uh, I love you all. Thank you so much for listening. I love sitting here and shit talking about martial arts and getting a little buzz on with you, Jake. So thank you all for listening. You can follow me at Lucas Leisure on social media, Instagram, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. And uh, Jake just puts up a bunch of pictures of his kids, so you know how we do. Yep. All right, everybody. This is the Stronghold Podcast. Thank you all for listening. We'll catch you next time. Mm-hmm.